Mm -hmm. And so does that. This adjusts and there's a... Um, right, you've got the exact one to nail if you want to. Uh-huh. I haven't deadheaded the Super Tunis today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shirley. That was helpful. You're welcome. Actually, I'm not depending on the. Mike, in my the most important question I want to get is, who wrote the initiative? Who wrote? Who drafted the? Well, the... let me talk. Unless you and I talk about it a little okay. bit, so I can say what you want me to say. Yeah. Uh, I and a guy that worked for me, Bob Ficker, who now lives in Portland. Uh, well, we went to a meeting. I don't. I mean, let me step up, step back. I went to a meeting, and uh, Victor said he thought the only thing was an initiative. You know, mm -hmm. win that. And people were volunteering to do things like raise money and, and do things. And uh, Victor said. Well, first we got to have the initiative. We got to have <laughs> some law, some legislation. Yeah. So I volunteered to go. Yeah, I'm an attorney, by to go do some research. And he said he thought he had heard that uh, New Orleans had done something like that. So uh, I explained legal research to Bob, a, a bright guy. He's just instant. Bob but who? Bob Ficker, this guy. That okay. I explained yeah. what legal research was, and we went over to the Keek County Library, and we started digging around, and uh, I, we found the New Orleans New Orleans law, and then we found another one. We the, found one for, for the View Carre Commission. Yeah, View Carre. Yeah. yeah, and then we found one from. You know, I cannot remember whether it was another part of the South. It rings a bell. It was somewhere up in the north, but. Anyway, we found two laws. We sat, we spent about, oh, again, I, it's so long ago, two, three days reading it all and mm -hmm. melding it and yeah. putting together what we thought were the best parts. But we took everything back to Victor. We took, we, there was another meeting, I think Jerry Thone was at it, he's an attorney also. And Victor said, great. He said, all, well, I think at the first meeting, he said, all I need is a law. I can yeah. put the, boundary descriptions in it, but I don't know what the law should say. He said, I know what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I know uh, uh, what area I want to put in it, but I don't, you know, it's got to obviously be, you know, three or four pages of, of ordinance. Yeah. Know. So that, that we gave him that. Bob and I dra melded it all together and wrote mm -hmm. it up and uh, gave it to Victor. And I was busy. I couldn't be at a meeting that where he took it, and everyone thought it was great. And I was working for Wes at the time, so I had to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, Victor knew that. I, I told him when I volunteered. I said, you know, you can't talk about me and be part of this, or I'll be out of a job. Because Wes, had, I don't know if you remember, at that time he was pushing the uh, urban renewal. Yeah. yeah. Well, everybody thought that was a sensible, uh, yeah, progressive yeah, thing yeah, to do. Yeah. It was not a dishonorable position. To no, have. no, no. It wasn't a bad position, yeah. but uh, it didn't have the vision that Victor had. <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyway, we drafted. He took it. Uh, he he obviously added to it the boundaries. I remember many years later, not many, but ten years later, him saying, "I just wish I'd have made the boundaries bigger." <laughs> I mean, he didn't go up to first, you know, and he didn't, didn't go all the way up to first. Yeah. And he yeah. just said, uh, I thought I'd saved enough. Because he saved all the old buildings. That's what mm -hmm. he did. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just was sorry he hadn't made it bigger. But then, you know, that was that's all we did with it. I mean, that's uh -huh. the most. We, I mean, that's that was our extent. What, were you employed by the city then? Or? Yeah, I was running DHR. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, what, so let's see, 78? No, when was 68. it? 68. I mean, 68, 69. Yeah. Uh, might have been called Office of Human Resources. Yeah, because you had been with the university's research. Uh, well, I was uh, with the public. government, yeah, research and service. Then I went yeah. with OEO down in San Francisco. Then came back up here and worked for the local community action agency. Okay. Uh, and then Ed Devine 
got me into city work with kids and stuff. Excuse me, and then uh, Wes came in, right? Yeah. You know, he he got an extra. He came in '69. He got an extra year because we switched to the strong there. Because this is all fun for me because I left in uh, April of 69. Okay. Went back east and was gone 10 years. So Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember you told me that part yeah. of your life. And, uh, hi. Uh, I got another general question that's a good yeah. question. What okay, was, that's what happened. Uh, you yeah. tell me what you want me to. I mean, that's too long a story to prove. No, that's good because I have some other interviews on tape there. Uh, Jerry Thon particularly yeah. um, indicated that. And also Ken Pritchard who yeah, collects yeah, slides yeah. around. Recalls, but he couldn't recall the name. The other the general question I have is, uh, what is your first experience of the market? When did you first see it? When did you first realize this place is special? I'm trying to think of where I was living. It must go back to you know when we first came here in uh, '58. Boy, you're taking that's 40 years ago, Paul. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I, I, don't, of, I don't have a a recollection other than all the stalls and all the fish and yeah. all the uh, no T-shirts. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it was all produce and, yeah. and food and, and uh, you know meat and fish. Uh -huh. and some knickknacks. Uh, you remember the woman that used to be somewhere that. That sold kind of little trinkets, like she made handmade little. Well, uh, it was, there was a Birdie Richardson that was used that to her name? Uh, that used to sell uh, uh, stuff made out of nuts and seeds and uh, maybe necklaces was, and yeah, and necklaces. Uh, and she was from Kansas City, or well, that was considered, you know, that was non-food. I mean, yeah. that was way out, yeah. way back then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not way out, but I mean, it, that was unusual to see that among all the food. Mm -hmm. you know, Plants and uh, way back then again, very little flowers. I mean, there were some mm -hmm. people had flowers. I mean, people had flowers when they bloomed, but nowadays it just seems like the place is. Yeah. And that's not bad. I'm not saying that's bad, but, but they're a hell of a lot of flowers. Yeah. Well, the, my favorite story on that is the produce, the farmer selling flowers, and she said, "I used to sell carrots, and I'd sell them people three bunches for a dollar, and they'd grumble." And they're good carrots. And uh, now I sell them flowers. I charge them five dollars, and they smile and they're happy. Say, gee, I'd that's a good flowers. price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Oh, that's good. All those guys, but I, I just wanted to make sure Victor understood what we were, you know, what that we had melded yeah. the two things together, and that. Because they were both, they were slightly different. What's interesting is at that time the whole uh, national historic preservation movement was just beginning. Yeah, yeah. And uh, those were the we could only find two yeah. uh, other cities. And in Victor's world. addition to it, I mean the research you gave me, he obviously put in there the use yeah. approval, the yeah. control over use within the buildings. Yeah. And that doesn't isn't doesn't occur anywhere else. No, I. I think, well, he told us some of the things he wanted, yeah. so that's what we wrote. Yeah. We wrote, that's why I say we melded not only the two we found, but what he wanted also. So. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, God, it's a long time ago. We were but thinking I, about those picket lines we had out in front of City Hall. Member Phyllis was, I'm trying to remember if she was waffling on that thing, and then finally there was kind of like enough demonstration public demonstration where I think she just cut and took the side of the, the citizens against the big renovation. Remember, West was still supporting well, they were, it. They were, they were supporting the, yeah. uh, the uh, renewal. renewal. Yeah, yeah. And, but I think Phil is that there was just enough public demonstration. She just couldn't, she finally buckled and said, that's it. Yeah, I'm pulling out. I, don't, I can't support this anymore. The people don't want it. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, good times. Now you're doing uh, you're doing this for a for libraries or for um. I guess my questions are just. You want me to send this in or just fill it out? Oh, now? if you know someone that we don't. 
oh, have I contact see. with. For, uh, for other people. Yeah, because uh, mostly we're having trouble with addresses and phone numbers. Sure. People move on and things like that. Sure. Just put that in your pocket and put yeah, a number on it. A question I ask a lot of people, just to get them warmed up, is to, it's, can you remember the first experiences you had at the market and why it was, it became sure. special for you? <clears throat> when I was about six years old, my mother used to bring me in from Foster, where I lived, which is about 10 miles south of town. Yeah. And uh, we would come in on the Interurban. Uh -huh. yeah, the Interurban was the train that went from Tacoma to Seattle. Yeah. And there was also one, I guess, from... Uh, Everett to Seattle, but we lived out uh, about 10 miles south of town in a place called uh, Foster. Actually, it was Mortimer Heights, <laughs> and we went down to the Mortimer Junction <coughs> at, and got the interurban and came in, and the interurban stopped at on Occidental Street, mm -hmm. just south of Yesler. Okay. Came to there and stopped, and then we would get on the streetcar and go up to the market. Uh, it was probably 1924 or something like that. Right up First Avenue. Right up First Avenue, yeah. and uh, oh, I might have been second or third, and went to the market. And she would uh, go to the market and do her shopping, uh, maybe once a week or something like that. And she would leave me at the taffy pulling machine. There was a taffy pulling machine inside of four glass sides, and this machine, I can't, it was something like that, it would twist and they'd t pull up taffy and keep going and, uh -huh. and make taffy, and I would have my face glued to the <laughs> glass and watch that thing. Of course, if, then if I got tired of that, I would go over to the donut making machine. And there was a machine that pulled dough up out and uh, punched a hole in it, and it rolled on the tube or some damn thing, I don't remember how and would put, uh, drop down into the boiling oil and make a donut. Mm -hmm. So between those two machines, I was vastly entertained. And she mm -hmm. would come back and get me. We'd go back down to Occidental Street, catch the interurban, and go home. Oh, so that's where I first met the market. Uh -huh. Later, I don't know. But do you know, it's funny. Uh, Victor tells me that, or told me, that I introduced him to the market. Mm -hmm. which uh, I don't remember doing, but I suppose that may be true, but I don't remember it. Anyway, years later, after I became an architect, I, I used to, uh, uh, we had an office over on Fifth Avenue between uh, Lenora and Blanchard. Mm -hmm. Or no, between Virginia and Lenora. And we would go to the market for lunch. We were young architects and flat broke all the time, mm -hmm. so we'd go to the market where we could eat cheap, and mm -hmm. uh, we learned about this Bolivian restaurant, and uh, this is before the Friends of the Market was ever formed, mm -hmm. and we started a group called the Cracker Barrel Club. We went to the Bolivian restaurant because it was only four or five seats at a counter. He couldn't accommodate all of us. He'd set us, he'd put down a, a box a produce box outside the door and mm -hmm. we would sit around that and he would serve us the, his Bolivian food out there. Okay. He's the guy that has the, now has the Copa Gabunia. Yeah, his oh. daughter-in-law or his daughter. Oh, I yeah. suppose maybe he's mm -hmm. gone. Yeah. All my friends are dropping off. Anyway, that's when I first, uh, well, I always went to the market, but I don't remember much between my mother's taking me there as a child and later. Mm -hmm. But then years later when the market was threatened, then Vic and I and Elizabeth Tanner and some others, uh, what was her name, Anderson? Julie Anderson. Julie Anderson mm -hmm. and others, uh, we started the Friends of the Market and then carried on the campaign and so that was it. Mm -hmm. Were you active in Allied Arts before the Friends of the Market uh, began? No, I was not active in, I was actually at the birth of the, I attended at the birth of Allied Arts when John Dentley uh, decided, and Jack uh, Wright decided to get it started, or to start a, a group that, with that name. But I wasn't active, and I actually didn't join until I was asked to be president of it in 1970, I think it was. And they said, well, you better join first. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when I became active in Allied Arts. Mm -hmm. But you were active with Friends of the Market from its start in 1964. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. from the start of that until through the campaign, and then we did some work down there. and. I've gone there ever since. Still go there. Did you redo the Triangle Building? Yes, we did the Triangle Building. We did the uh, 
corner market. Corner market. Well, for actually, ja actually, it was uh, Carl Rekovic really did that. He's he was a partner of mine for many years, but he did that when he took a leave of absence and worked at the market mm -hmm. as an employee of the city at that time, I guess. And then we did the uh, sanitary market, <clears throat> which my partner Skip Norton did, and the uh, one just north of that at the corner of uh, First and Pine. Post Helen Market. Yeah. Post Helen Market. Just north of the corner market. Yeah. So we, those are the projects we did. Well, I live the only in one the... I participated in was the Triangle Market. I live in the Triangle Building. Oh, you and, do? Yeah, and I want to complain that I've got a little slope in my floor. <laughs> oh, Bookcases oh. have to be held against the wall. But <laughs> now I know where to write this stuff. Oh, that's a nice. I'm really proud of that building. I think Skip deserves more credit than I do on that. But uh, I've always been proud of it. You know, there's a funny story about that. While that was under construction, I remember going over there after work one day to look at how it was coming along and noticing that it was on a single post uh, steel pipe at the corner, which then it was kind of a sharp corner, the way it's the triangle. And I thought, gee, that sort of looks unstable. I don't have it braced very well. And I thought, God, what if there was a quake, air earthquake tonight? That thing would really go tumbling down. We'd lose it forever. I called, the, when I got home that uh, evening, I called the uh, contractor. It was a black man, I think, that was the contractor. Uh, and I suggested, you know, you really ought to brace that thing because it's dangerous the way it is. So if there were a strong wind or an earthquake, it would go down. So he promised to go down after dinner and, and brace it, which he did. And you know, that night there was a small earthquake, about a three Richter or something. <laughs> And it was saved. I was. Yeah, I still like the building. It's a nice building, lovely apartment. Yeah, so I think yeah. you're lucky to be in it. I I, I feel the same thing too. Has a, it's yeah. a wonderful space. Yeah. We were in it last night. Uh -huh. and beautiful view down to the street. Uh, the back in the in the 60s, as the friends were uh, working towards um, avoiding the urbanization of the yeah. uh, market, um, <clears throat> did you hold offices with the friends of the market, or were you? Um, Mostly. What do you mean? Did I hold offices? I mean, did, uh, did did it have office offices, uh, presidents, no. secretaries, and things like no, that? No, we didn't. A... Uh, Victor was the de facto chairman. He was a professor, and he had time to to uh, monkey with it and devote time to it. Uh -huh. uh, I was an architect trying desperately to make a living. Um, I can't. Although, yeah, although that time the living was pretty good. We were very busy in the late sixties. But just before the Boeing crash, you know, the mm -hmm. Boeing crash was about sixty-nine or seventy. You were designing. College dormitories that I ended up living in. Really? Up at <laughs> yes. or Ellensburg? Central. <laughs> yeah. I remember being very excited that I got to live in this beautiful. Which room. one did you live in? Davies. Davies Hall. Davies. Which one was that? Yeah, it was a this was at Ellensburg. In Ellensburg. I'm pretty sure. I and mean, we did it was four kind of, a of them. Cluster of brick. We yeah. did uh, yeah. Meissner, Beck mm -hmm. Hall, so on. Then they yes. added two more. That was that probably. That must one. have been one of them. It was right Davies, by Meissner. Probably. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know that it was your hand. It's the only only room. buildings I ever did, which are known by the occupants, is the Bassetti dorms. Oh. Mm -hmm. I was on an airplane once with a young woman, and I asked her where she was from, and so on. She told me Allensburg. And, oh, really? I, at the college? Yeah. University? Well, where do you stay? She said, well, I live, I live in the Bassettis. <laughs> and I said, well, really? Do you know what that means? She said, no, I just call them the Bassettis. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway. When uh, Victor was in, in um, England, you were pretty much his lieutenant back here yeah. for a lot of things. Elizabeth and um, Julie and I, and one or two others. Bob Ashley was active, I think, although he was later in the Friends of the Market. I mean, in uh, the, what was it called? There was another group trying to save the Alliance it. to save the market. Anyway, we were yeah. the ones who kind of carried it on, you know. I hope to say a few words tonight about Vic and our activities. Were there any repercussions for you professionally from your activity with the Friends on behalf uh, of the yes, market? Yes, there were. Uh, Phyllis Lamphere was dead sent against the Friends. Mm -hmm. She wanted to have this new re urban renewal project there, which would have put a 34-story building on the site of the Triangle. Mm -hmm. uh, slick concrete building. And my ex-partner Jack Morris and Paul Kirk were the designers for that group. And, you know, there were some hard feelings between them and, and ourselves. They had this big commission, and I can't blame them for wanting to see it go. Mm -hmm. And we were dead set on, set on saving the area. So there were some bad feelings, sort of, between us. 
but that passed. But Phyllis, I remember, uh, was really strongly for that uh, new development, and she got mad at Vic and me, particularly. Uh, I remember uh, Marge Redmond, who was a close pal of Phyllis's, who took me to task once. She just took me the, by the lapel once and said, what are you doing this for? You know, you're stopping progress. Mm -hmm. Which, I uh, shouldn't speak of that way, she's uh, dead and gone now. Very bright woman, but I don't know, they got somehow involved in that development, and I think it would have been, been a bad thing for the market. Well, it would have taken out half the market. Mm -hmm. yeah. Taking all the sanitary market out, that whole business, mm -hmm. and down to the triangle where you're where you're standing. And filled it with towers. And yeah, filled it with towers. Not only taking away mm -hmm. that space, but well, they said they would save the core, mm -hmm. but the core without the surrounding would have been isolated mm -hmm. and uh, not worth it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty remarkable. So we're lucky. Thanks to people like you. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have something that, that we all like. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Bassett. Yeah, no, it's not digital. I'm thoroughly impressed that this many people remember, you know, remember 25 years ago and, you know, where, where the, the campaign to start the market, to save the market began. And we're also, you know, I, I am also pretty well knocked off the, uh, the feet that there are so many people here who recognize you know what happened and and are impressed enough with the market and the and the, the spirit of the market to you know to be here on their own with, you know, without uh, without having uh, without having the the emotional tug of, of passing petitions. <laughs> and um, I you know, what am I what am I going to do now I, I you know I've welcomed what everybody and, and that's what that's what the program says welcome everyone <laughs> Marvelous, um, well, Shirley. Offer toast to the old friends and new friends of the market. Oh, oh. old friends and new friends here, here, here. of the market. Here, here, here. God save her, everyone. And then I'd like to introduce Jackson Schmidt, who's one of the yeah, one of the uh, the co-chairs of the um, of the campaign to save the market. Who is going to explain what um, you know? How you fit into the niche for the next uh, several years? Thank you. All right. <laughs> yes, I am Jack Smith. I am the co-president of the Market Foundation. Here's the other co-president, Pat Stusser. And on behalf of the board, Pat and I would like to thank you all for being here. As you can imagine. <laughs> There's a secretary. But does he write a check? That's right. Right. He's in enforcement. As you can imagine, we get to, to we, we've been to a lot of these home front parties in the last year and a half, uh, two years, and clearly I, I've never seen so many faces and I've never seen so many people I don't know. Um, but it, it's wonderful that you turned out, and that's also a testimony to, to Shirley now who have gone well above and beyond the call of duty for having this many people. And I think we should thank them again. Yeah. Before I leave the thank yous, uh, I, I must thank Anthony's Home Port, Grand Central Bakery, and the Japanese Gourmet. Um, they have donated all of the refreshments this evening. Whoa. All right. here, here. Take a few minutes and, and talk a little bit about what the Market Foundation has been doing. As you know, uh, and one of the things that we're doing here today is this is being billed as the 25th anniversary celebration. 25 years ago, certain cities, and it's hard to believe that this could possibly have been the case, but there was actually a proposal, it was called Urban Renewal, to come in and take the market that we know, dig a big hole, put in underground parking, and stick a hotel and convention center on top of it. A group of very committed Seattle citizens got together, decided to do something about it. They got the signatures. They convinced the voters of the, of the city of Seattle uh, to save the market. And today it's preserved as a historic district. It's the, the wonderful, vital, lively place that, uh, that we know. Um, in celebration of that event here in 1996, the Market Foundation started planning last September. We had our kickoff back on May 16th uh, down at Steinbrook Park. The mayor came and gave a speech. There was a bicycle race. Peter Steinbrook spoke. And we used it as the occasion of the Starbucks Corporation 
Uh, we announced for their gift of $200,000 for the Market Foundation Capital Campaign, the largest single gift that the Market Foundation has ever received. What a great way to kick off the, the 25th celebration. There are many more events coming this summer you should be aware of. August 16th is going to be a big day. Um, it's the Market to Market Bring Your Pig event. And I'm sure you all have a pig, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's happened is... I know we... <laughs> 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 yeah, I know bring them on down. <laughs> so, the Market Foundation has had manufactured hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of uh, replicas of, of Rachel the Pig. They're being distributed throughout the town. You'll see them in every U.S. bank branch. Um, we're asking families, children, retailers to, to fill them up with coins, bring them down to the market. There's going to be a contest and, and prizes for who can, who can bring in the, uh, the, the most spare change. Also that evening, there's going to be a fun new event. We're, we're closing off the market, fencing it off, putting in what we hope is going to be the world's largest picnic table from one end to the other. We're getting the best restaurants in Seattle to, to serve the food. Starbucks is uh, hiring live uh, music. We're getting blues bands. We don't know who yet, but they're coming. Um, and it's just going to be a tremendous evening. It's, it's a sunset dinner in the, park, in, in the market, and, and we hope that it's going to be an uh, annual and, and continuing tradition in the market. What night? Uh, it's the night of uh, Friday, August 16th, right after you bring your pig yeah. <laughs> right. to the market. Um, what else is going on? We've opened a store in the market. If you all know where Flower Lane is, right there in the, in the center. Uh, the Market Foundation is now selling goods, the proceeds of which go into uh, the Market Foundation Fund. Um, I know I'm leaving something out. The, oh, the, uh, the, the, the raffle coming. In September, we're having a series of, of lectures, four Sundays in a row. Um, speakers and topics all relating to the history of the market. And next week, we complete the installation of the historical exhibits in the market. It's a new thing, and, and they're getting rave reviews. The next time you're down there, make a point of, of going and, and seeking them out. And they tell the story of the market, and they also tell the story of the friends of the market, people who 25 years ago uh, did what they did so that we could be here today. Um, the reason that the Market Foundation is doing these events and, and, and celebrating this is twofold. One, it's our charter to preserve the character and the spirit of the Pike Place market. And we think in order to do that, it's important to educate the people who use the market so that they understand that the market is really, it's truly a community. I think it's much more like a medieval village than a, an open air Northgate Mall, which many people are under the mistaken impression it is. Secondly, uh, it's an opportunity for fundraising which is what we do to, to provide the funding for the, the, the market agencies, and, and Bill will talk more about that in a few minutes. So that's kind of the agenda of what we're doing um, this, this summer. <coughs> Before I turn it over to Bill, uh, there's a special group of people we've invited here tonight, and I'd like to take a minute to, to recognize them. Back in 1990, the market faced another threat that began with the word urban. This time, it wasn't urban renewal. Uh, it was the urban group. It was a group of investors who had entered into some uh, transactions back in the 1970s, perfectly legitimate tra tax transactions, who, when the rules changed and in flagrant bad faith, claimed that they owned the market. So three entities and organizations rushed uh, to the defense of the market. The city of Seattle stepped in, uh, the Pike Market PDA, headed by Shelly App at the time, and Shelly is here this evening, and she's still... Left. My left. There she is. <laughs> Shelly is, uh, is still uh, in charge of the PDA. Peter Steinbrook uh, formed the Citizens Alliance, and, um, and they stepped into the fray. The two of them uh, gathered a, an entire crew, a, a crew of, of attorneys and, and others, many of whom are, are here this evening, to step in. And I was thinking today, I, I remember Early on in that process, I knew we were going to win that case. I just It was clear to me we were going to win it, and it was obvious why. After a series of meetings I sat through with Shelley and with Peter, I was convinced that these are two of the strongest willed people who have ever walked the face of the earth. <laughs> and that, that no one, no one could withstand those two people. And indeed, uh, they, in, in short order, about a year and a half, they threw many of us at the problem, and the problem went away. It was solved successfully. Uh, <clears throat> it's only been since 
that experience and since I became involved with the, uh, uh, the market board that I think I really truly understood what it was we were preserving and what it was we were protecting. The market has over 500 residents down there, average age over 64 years old, average annual income less than $6,000. What allows them to live there, what allows the, the market character and, and spirit to, to, to be maintained is the, is the agencies that the market foundation funds. The Pike Market Medical Center sees 24,000 patients a year, five exam rooms. They're absolutely booked full time. The Senior Center, I was up there the other day, absolutely overcrowded, packed with people. They serve 20,000 lunches a year. They've got an old three burner stove that they, they crank them out on. The Daycare Center, 170 families are, are served by that on an annual basis, over 60% of them on scholarships with money provided by the Market <laughs> Foundation. The Food Bank. Uh, food Bank distributes over a thousand bags of groceries a week, and many of those are delivered to people who are housebound, elderly, who can't get out and get their own groceries and be delivered. I think the mission of the Market Foundation and those agencies is at the very heart of, of what the market's about and what was being preserved. And on behalf of the Market Foundation, all of you here who were involved in that litigation, we want to thank you because that's what you say. Thank you very much. Bill True is now going to talk with you about the capital campaign. <laughs> I'm, I'm quicker, but you have to kind of go through this part of it, too. Uh, I really have... Um, you're leaving? <laughs> I have kind of two roles tonight. The, the first one is I kind of want to be the tote board. And the tote board is there's two numbers I'd like to share with you. The first one is the capital campaign for the Market Foundation is at 2.55. The, yes. We have three million dollar goal. Very We're very much at the at the tail end, but we need your help. We need uh, lots more help in this last year, the 25th anniversary year. Uh, we're really looking at this year as the uh, the time for us to finish the campaign and raise the money that we have to raise to do all the things that Jackson talked about in terms of the agencies and, and the market in general. The second number, which in some ways for hoofprint parties, as Jackson talked about, we've been doing a lot of these over the last three years, is that this group raised $10,000 before it even started. So that all the people who RSVP know raised $10,000. So I, that's, yeah. <laughs> so I'd really like to offer that as a challenge to this group uh, in terms of our ability to raise some money tonight. Because the other role, the other half I have tonight is I'm a pitch man. I'm, I'm, I'm really am here to ask for money. Uh, and there's just no two ways about it. Uh, we're looking to raise those remaining uh, approximately $500,000 for the for the market. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the campaign and the kinds of things we've funded and we've committed to fund into the future. Uh, so far, we have committed. One of the really fun things about the project and the campaign is that we are doing lots of small projects. And so we've gotten to see a lot of the projects already come to fruition. The uh, windows at the corner market, uh, the refrigeration at the food bank, uh, the public seating that's now throughout the market that's been so sorely needed for so long. Uh, all these things are because of the, uh, the Care for the Market campaign. And the big one that we, we point to in our, uh, it's kind of the, the fun one, is the expansion of the play space at the child care center. All projects that really happened only because the Market Foundation uh, capital campaign that we're talking about tonight. So we're very pleased about that. We're on the, we're, we're very much on the home stretch. We're trying to raise, raise the last half million dollars, which would go to what we call uh, the market fund. The market fund is a fund that the board of directors started uh, several years ago to fund special projects, the kind of projects that all of you know a lot more about than, than I do in terms of the history of the market's commitment to low income and elderly uh, people. Uh, the market fund has funded uh, the retention of uh, low income housing at the Gatewood Hotel. It's uh, helped, it will help the retention of low income housing at the Elliott Hotel. It has uh, also been the seed money for the resident advocate. If you don't know about that program, it's a terrific program where there are someone looking out for the, the low income and elderly residents within the market, and that came from, from the Market Foundation. So we're very excited about the campaign. We're very excited about the campaign um, wrapping up. We, we, we want your help. We need your help. Please help. Um, the pledge cards are here, and they'll be uh, distributed. Uh, I've, got, I've done this so much that I used to kind of be timid at this part of the, no, no, like, no. <laughs> no you're very good. <laughs> please, please help. Um, and be before we do that, uh, what I'd like to do is 
and I also, I, those of you, I'd like to point out that the, uh, oh, it's already happening, that's great. Uh, <laughs> there's all sorts of really fun ways to, to recognize your gift, and, and the most obvious one, I hope you've seen all the hoof prints that are kind of uh, squiggling their way from Rachel out to First Avenue. If you haven't, I hope you do. And that would be a thousand dollar gift, which is why we call these hoof print uh, parties. So we hope, hope to help out. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce a few people who, who have uh, been nice enough to prepare some kind of thoughts and, and uh, remembrances of the uh, market. And is Fred here? Yes, oh, he's, he's over there, brother. Could you start off? A different Fred, not Fred. Go ahead. <laughs> read a couple of things about the early days relating to the market getting started. I mean, the fight to save the market getting started. One specifically about Victor and one about our, our feeling for the character of the market. Before I do that, though, I want to say that when I was about six years old, my mother used to, I, we lived out of Foster, which is uh, about 10 miles south of Seattle, it's now first of Willow. And my mother would bring me in Oh, about 1924 or something like that on the interurban. And we'd go down to Mortimer, walk down to Mortimer Junction from Foster, and then we'd come in on the interurban, which stopped on Occidental, where it hit uh, Yesen. Here's a spit tower right here. Here's Yesen. Occidental comes in there, and that's where the interurban stopped. And we would get on the streetcar, go up 2nd or 3rd or 1st Avenue to the market. And she would do her shopping about once a week and leave me as about a six year old or so with my face up against the window of the uh, taffy making machine. There was a machine that did something like this and made taffy. And if that if it bored me, then I'd go over to the donut making machine, which <laughs> somehow, I don't know, I suppose it's like making smoke rings. It made dough rings and then dumped them in the boiling pot. And when she was done with her shopping, she would always find me there. And then we'd go back down to the end of the river. At any rate, years later, Vic told me once that when we were doing the, the campaign, he said I had introduced him to the market. Now, I don't remember that at all. And I'm kind of proud of that happened because uh, it may have had an effect. But at any rate, um, I'll read first the uh, statement on the market that was made uh, about 25 years ago. This is how we felt about it. There was a group of us, architects, lawyers, uh, engineers, Don Frothingham, I remember. Bob Ashley, I remember. We would go to the um, Bolivian restaurant. I can't remember the name of the guy. Who, Copacabana. Who owned the, who started the Copacabana. Well, it was called the Copacabana. Oh, Grandpa. Anyway, but there were about six or eight of us that go there for lunch, and there were only, uh, I think, seven or eight seats. So we would have to sit outside, and he would sit down a produce box and, and put his paper over it, and we would eat the Bolivian food there. That was the Cracker Barrel Club. That was before the Friends of the Market started. Then finally we got, when, when the threat of the city and their big concrete development came that was going to put a 34-story tower, where's the video camera guy? Right where he lives on the, there he is, <laughs> on, the on the triangle where he lives in the triangle market. That's where this 34-story uh, hotel was going to be. Anyway, we said at that time about the market, it reveals the face of truth. Its roughness reminds me of Seattle's beginning, its lusty past, the vitality that gave it national notice long ago. It's an honest place in a phony time. This is 1970 about. While the advertising public relations syndrome <laughs> gains, the market is a haven where real values survive, where directness can be experienced, where young people who have never known anything other than pre-cut meat, frozen vegetables, or homogenized milk can discover some things that they don't see on television or in Disney's picture books <coughs> and movies. They will discover that milk is really made up of two parts, skin and cream, that tenderloin steaks are the least part of the steer, Carrots are more green than orange. They will learn that food can be preserved even without freezing machines. That such native preserving methods as smoking or kippering or salting bear the additional gift of heightened flavor. They will also find
find out, find out that most people are not well dressed and others are not clean. This will do them good. The Pike Place Market is worth holding on to because it is unique in our area. All these things still apply. <laughs> and yet it does need help. It needs the hammer and paintbrush, not the black ball of destruction. Sympathy and imagination will be more worth more here than dollars. The market also needs the revitalizing influence of new customers. People who live nearby and will not add to the automobile traffic jam. There are many magnificent sights along the hill with spectacular views of the harbor, just waiting for a sensitive entrepreneur. Where's Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> this is all about all the market does need, some loving care and new housing Together with better, better parking facilities, it will then survive with its own fine character. Let us keep this market that each generation may discover it in turn. Now, just as our campaign was really getting going, Vic decided to go to London for a year. <laughs> Maybe it was there two years. Do you remember? One year. One year? 68. Anyway, then uh, Julie Anderson and uh, Elizabeth Tanner and I and Others kept the thing going, but it was a, an organism without a heart, without Victor. And this is what I uh, wrote for Victor. There was a going away party, and I read this to him as he left. And how many? I'd like to be interested in seeing. Hold up your hand if you knew Victor personally. How many? <laughs> well, a few. Terrific. Anyway, to Victor, there is a man one who can be counted on. It is not enough to give money or say nice things or think happy thoughts, hoping for the best. One must act, step forward. Vic does, and always did. He's a strong, solid-looking man, not gaunt and nervous like some I know too well. <laughs> yes, a solid man to be depended on. He counts in his city, though some don't like him. Their hangers on are yes men. He shakes them. He shakes them with his faith in people. They like a steady boat tied to land. He does count, and his strength grows each year. But most people like him. The ones that matter with me, the real ones because he's right. He doesn't play it safe. He goes where civil trouble, civic trouble is and takes his stand. He disarms the enemy with a smile and a 10-foot pen. <laughs> Seattle's loss is London's game, but they won't know it un until it's too late and he'll be back here by then. To Victor and his family, bon voyage and arrivederci, 1967. <laughs> I knew that. I wanted to make sure you were. Well, I was not shopping. <laughs> I lived with that when I was growing up. I now moved into a, I arrived, and I don't care to see my wash hanging out the uh, window, which is kind of a neat way that you think of the market. It kind of turns the world upside down in many respects. And that's, that's what you don't think of. Um, two things I was going to share that I was proud of is one of them, uh, I, I kind of came to 
between years, and I would like to, the record to show that the market was not sold on my watch. <laughs> Regardless of Jackson's uh, history, it was not sold until after I left in 1980. Um, the other one, though, was the, the early recognition that services to the people who live in and around the market were coming. <laughs> Locked in by the magic of... Now, the, the, the fight about the, um, the renovation and so on was what, late 60s, wasn't it? Um, I remember that. I don't remember it very well. But how to renovate it and things like that? Yeah, but w yeah. which was defeated. You know, that initiative that he talked about. Oh, great. Right. Okay, that's what Late 60s or early 70s? It was 1971. The, okay, so that was 71. Yeah. What had happened all through the 60s was uh, various plans uh, approved or signed off by the city government. Because called, it was in bad shape. It was it in was, bad shape. Yeah. And the money was available from the federal government. So they, they kind of wanted to cash in on that and... Uh, and that went on. Then the friends said, look at the market is uh, pretty nice the way it is. We'd like you to keep it. Kind yeah, of like that's that. what I remember. Yeah. Yeah. It looked, like, it looked the same. <laughs> yeah. What were you doing then in 68, 69 um, or so? Well, um, in 68, 69, I was uh, finishing a master's degree at the University of Washington. I, mean, I was going back to school as, a, as an old student. And mm -hmm. I ran for the legislature in 72. So, um, so that was before I was politically inclined. Yeah. Did you have any? Did you sign the petition, or do you? Did you know people yes, who were? Yes, I, rem active I remember in that? going to the market, visiting the market, and uh, what I particularly remember is that after it was all renovated, it looked the same. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what I remember. Yeah, well, that was a <laughs> That's what thing, I most yeah. remember. And that was, I think, what was most charming that people. That's what they wanted. They wanted it to feel the same. Mm -hmm. To feel the same. Yeah. Yeah. Were you, were you a native of, of Seattle oh, no. or this region? No, no, You came from? Uh, well, I came from New Jersey originally, but I ha hadn't lived in New Jersey. I really came from living in Caracas, Venezuela. Hmm. Okay. So that was a long time ago. This is a question I ask everybody. What was your first impressions of the market that made you realize it was special? Yeah. I think it's complexity. Mm -hmm. And the many layers and levels, and I mean both words. Yeah. And uh, and then that wonderful display of everything, um, and the type of people. Mm -hmm. All of those things were different from Ghirardelli Square, for example, in San Francisco. Uh, I mean, yeah. just worlds apart. Yeah. Worlds apart. One was artificial Hollywood type, and one was very real feeling. Mm -hmm. Did you, you had, um, or beyond the 71 initiative, but you were in the legislature and you were important in saving the market the second time from the New York investors with the, the state Helped system. get a little bit of money, a little bit of money for the local market, yes. Over a million and a half, wasn't it? Yeah. And, uh, that's a, perhaps a, a second history, you know, that. Yeah, that's another chapter. Yeah. That was another chapter, and that was a, that was a pretty disturbing chapter how that worked out. Well, I, I think the people who made the decision just, you know, they didn't anticipate that it was going to happen like it did, but mm -hmm. it was in jeopardy. It really seemed to be oh, yeah. Yeah. I that. um, That's about it.